Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Siganoth. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. So Habakkuk says he has heard the Lord's speech. The Lord's speech is in the Bible. You want to hear the voice of God? It's in the Bible. You know, it, makes, it amazes me when I hear black Christians say God speaks to them. It, 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 when God spoke to the Israelites, do y'all remember what happened? It said there was an earthquake, thunders and lightnings, mountains were split, but the Negro Christian says God speaks to them. You're idiots. And he says, in fact, the only one he spoke to face to face ever was Moses. That's it. But every black Christian's mother and their grandfather says the Lord speaks to them. Insane, lying, black, ashy Christians. Read on. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. And revive the Israelites. That's what it's talking about. Revive thy work means revive the Israelites in the midst of time. Go ahead. In the midst of the years, make known. Make it, known thy truth, thy word. In wrath, remember mercy. While you have wrath, God, remember mercy upon the Israelites. God came from Teman. God came from Teman. That's watch this. And the holy and the holy one from Mount Paran Salah. Can we look up Teman? Elisha, can you look up Teman for us? Teman, T E M A N. Y'all see what Teman says? Get a liar. Teman, eat him. Remember what we read earlier? The, remember in the book, it said there's many prophecies like in Isaiah and other books that have not been accomplished yet. So now we're reading, go back to Habakkuk 3. Yes, sir. And verse 3 again. Verse 3. God came from Teman. Came from Edom. And the Holy One from Mount Paran. Selah. All praises. It's true. Go ahead. His glory covered the heavens. So this is about judgment upon Edom. Go ahead. This goes with Isaiah 63. Go ahead. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. Mm -hmm. And his brightness was as, as the light. And the Lord's brightness shall be as the light when he returns. Go ahead. He had horns coming out of his hand. When it says horns, get a lie. What does it say in your Bible? It should be a number. Bright, bright beams out of his side. Bright beams of light coming out of his side. I mean, out of his hands, there was power. I mean, y'all talk about the Avengers. Look at Iron Man. Look at Thor. The hell with those mythological guys. They got that from the Bible. It says when Christ came, it was beams of light bursting from his hands. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. And there was, and there was the hiding of his power. Meaning he had to, he had to hold some power back. He said, if I use all my power, I'm going to destroy the earth. I got to hold it back. Go ahead. Before him. Wait, the, wait. That goes with, find me that in Isaiah, I think it's 47, where says, I will not meet you as a man. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Y'all hear what Christ said? I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. You see that? So that's what Habakkuk 3 is going into. So back to Habakkuk 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was, and there was the hiding of his power. Holding some of his power back. Go ahead. Before him went the pestilence. And burning coals went forth at his feet. Total destruction. Go ahead. He stood and measured the earth. He stood and measured the earth. The circumference of the earth. How, where he's going to destroy. That's what he's going into. How much of Edom is he? Because he ain't going to kill all the Edomites right away. He got to leave some for what? Slavery. Slavery. <laughs> Go ahead. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. He drove asunder the nations. The Arabs, the Chinese, the Japanese, so forth and so on. Go ahead. And the everlasting mountains. And the were everlasting mountains were what? Scattered. Scattered. Go ahead. The perpetual hills. The perpetual smaller governments. Did bow. Did bow. Go ahead. His ways are everlasting. His ways are everlasting. Read. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction. So he saw the tents of Kushan. You got a number next to Kushan? Yes, sir. What uh, is Ethiopia. It? Ethiopia. Now watch this. Give me, uh, uh, what's the scripture? Isaiah 11. I'm going to show you all something. Isaiah chapter 11. 11. 11. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. 11. Yes, sir. Isaiah start 10. Start at 10. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. 
And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. That's Christ, standing for an ensign of the people. And Christ, the ensign, is going into the Bible. Go ahead. To it shall the Gentiles seek. To it shall the gent. Now, Christians read that and go, ah, see, we got you here. No, these Gentiles are Israelites. Let's just read on. He's going to, Isaiah is going to explain the Gentiles. Go ahead. And his rest shall be glorious. Here it comes. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush. Y'all see Cush right there? That's Kushan, Cush, Ethiopia. Now you ask yourself, what, what does it mean from Cush? Let's just read down. Down. Go ahead. And from Elam. That's India. And from Shinar. That's Iraq. And from Hamath. Uh -huh. And from the islands of the sea. And he, sh and he shall set up an ensign for the nations. That's the Bible. Go ahead. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Stop. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. So the outcasts of Israel. Go ahead. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah are those that are left, the remnant left from Assyria. That's verse 11 again. Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. So Cush right there. So you got outcasts of Israel dispersed of Judah in Cush, which is Ethiopia. So now when we go back to Habakkuk 3 and verse 7, read that again. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 7. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. So that lets you know there's two groups in Ethiopia. There's two, you have Shemites, which are Israelites, and you have Hamites there, which are real Ethiopians. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Hold that. Go to Acts chapter 8. Christians get confused on this too, and they think, oh, we got you here. Oh, shut the hell up. Is it 8 I want? Yes, sir. Acts chapter 8 and verse 27. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of, Ethiop of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. So this Ethiopian had descriptions. He was reading the book of Isaiah. Go ahead. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. And said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? So when you read, on, read down, this Ethiopian repented, got baptized, all of that, learned the scriptures. So if he was a Hamite, why would the Lord tell Philip, join yourself to him? This Ethiopian is obviously what Isaiah 11, 11 makes reference to. Do y'all understand that? Sir. This is an outcast of Israel. A dispersed of Judah. Go back to Habakkuk 3 now. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 7. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Mm -hmm. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? When it says, was the Lord displeased against the rivers, give me that in Isaiah 17, verse 12 and 13 as a precept. Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 12. Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. So God is going to scatter the nations. Christ is going to scatter and smite the nations. So when we go back to Habakkuk 3 verse 8, Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 8, was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Meaning the nations. Go ahead. Was thine anger against the rivers? Mm -hmm. Was thy wrath against the sea? The nations. That thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? So he's asking a question. Go ahead. Thy, thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes. What is it talking about thy bow? Get that in Zechariah 9 verse 13. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 13. The book of Zechariah. Chapter 9 and verse 13. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, hmm. and raised up thy sons, O Zion. That's right. Against thy sons, O Greece. Uh-oh. 
and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. So this bow was making reference to Israel. So what? go back to Habakkuk 3 and 9 again. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 9. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes. Even thy word. So it's talking about the scriptures. The bow is going into the records, the scriptures of the Israelites. So it says it was made quite naked, meaning clear, obvious, according to the oaths of the tribe. Because the Bible is the oaths of the tribes. Even thy word. Indeed, thy word. Go ahead. Selah. Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. Thou didst cleave the earth with nations. Go ahead. The mountains saw thee. And they trembled. Now the government saw thee and trembled. Go ahead. The overflowing of the water passed by. Come on. The deep uttered his voice and lift up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. So this is when Christ returned. You're going to see all these things happening. Go ahead. At the light of thine arrows they went. At the light of thy missiles they went. And at the shining of thy glittering spear. Hold that. Give me that glittering spear. Give me that in Jeremiah 50 verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 25. The Lord have opened his armory. Because the Lord has weapons. Go ahead. And have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Yeah, his weapons is these missiles. Go ahead. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. In the land of America. Babylon the Greek. Go back. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 11. Verse 12. No, verse 11. Excuse me. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear, thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. See that? Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Didn't we just read that word in uh, Malachi chapter 1 verse 4 about Esau, Edom, whom the Lord shall have indignation against the people forever. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen, meaning the nations, in anger. So he ain't coming back happy. Go ahead. Verse 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Can y'all tell a Christian that? Christ is coming back for the salvation of his people. That's what it means by thy, of thy people. Hold on. Give me Isaiah 45, 17. Y'all know this one. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. That's right. Go back to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 3, and verse 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. He, Christ is not coming for the salvation of all nations on the planet. He's coming for the Israelites coming out of all nations. Go ahead. Even for salvation with thine anointed. Right. Christ is the anointed. He's the Savior. Go ahead. Thou woundest the head of... Out of the house of the wicked. Who, what is the head? Give me the Isaiah 34 and 5. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. The head of the wicked is America. Babylon the great. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 5, Bishop. Yes. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come, up, come down upon Idumia. Y'all see that? Idumia, that's the head. And America's number one. Go ahead. And upon the people of my curse. And upon the people of my curse. Go to, ahead. to judgment. To judgment. How are you going to read that and say all the prophecies are already fulfilled? You're an idiot. That's the same thing Isaiah 63. And, give me that in Isaiah 63 and 1. Sir. Book of Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Who is this that cometh from Edom? That's the same thing that we read in Habakkuk 3 verse. Uh, what verse was that? 13. Back three in verse three. Okay. God came from Teman, which is Edom, saying the same thing. Go ahead. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel. This is Christ coming. Go ahead. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. That's who Christ is. He says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Let's go home back. There's some heavy stuff there. Habakkuk chapter three, verse 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation of thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked mm -hmm. by discovering the foundation unto the neck. You know what that means? When, you, when your neck gets cut, the whole head is off. So Esau, Edom, going to be cut. Whoop! Starting with America. That's number one. Go ahead. Say la. Say la. All praises. Go ahead. Verse 14. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. 
They came out as a whirlwind to scatter. So me. his villages is going into his allies, the nations of earth that are allied themselves with Edom. Thou did a strike through with his staves, the head of his villages. That's Europe, the Euro uh, European Union. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Go ahead. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. See that? The nations have always rejoiced to devour the Israelites secretly. Now look at that. Y'all see that poor right there? Give me that in Isaiah. Um, where is it? 14. 14, the last verse. Yes, Thank sir. you. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 32. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord have founded Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it? See that? That the Lord has founded Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it. Y'all see that? Hey, give me that uh, precept in Matthew 5 about the poor. Because somebody think the poor is just talking about finances. Mm -mm, not necessarily. Matthew chapter 5 verse and three. Verse, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Read it again. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What makes us poor in spirit is because what? We have lost our culture. Our heritage, our identity. So no matter how much, remember Joseph of Arimathea, he, although he was rich, guess what? He was poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit. We have nothing. We've lost our kingdom, our language, our culture, our heritage. Read that again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's go back to Habakkuk. Now we understand what it means by the poor. And that was verse 14, Habakkuk 3, verse 14, once again. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 14. Thou didst strike through with his staves, the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Meaning the nations came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Hey, fight, watch this. Here's a precept. Give me that in 2nd Esdras. Is it chapter 7 or 13? Where it talks about uh, they stop fighting with each other. Yes, sir. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. It's 2nd uh, Esdras 13 and verse 33. And when all the Start at 32. Verse 32. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared. That's Christ. Whom thou sawest as a man ascending. What's going to happen? And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land lead the battle. They have one against another. And an innumerable multitude. And an innumerable multitude. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them. Willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. So that's what we want it right there. That's what it's going to read. Verse 35. But he shall stand upon, mount, upon the top of the Mount Zion. And Zion shall come. And now when shall, it says and Zion shall come, it's talking about the people right there. Go ahead. And Zion shall come and shall be showed, showed to all men. Being prepared and build it. We shall be prepared and build it. Like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. Watch this. And this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations. All the wicked inventions they've created. Their satellites. Their um, space force. What's it called? SpaceX or spa whatever it's called. What is it? Space force going to be destroyed. All the various missiles that they got going to be destroyed. Go ahead. Which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto fire. So Christ is going to destroy these nations. Let's go on back. Habakkuk 3. We're almost done. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 15. I want 14. Again. Verse 14. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Now, this is the next precept. This is why we went to that precept. Go ahead. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Here it comes. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. So they have many secret attempts to destroy us. This COVID-19 is just one of millions. Okay. So they, they see that not enough of us died. So now they tweak the virus again. They got a stronger strain. And they said they got several strains that come hereafter. They want to hit Africa, destroy it, take over the whole continent. That's what they plan to do. What they did with South Africa, that was just the beginning. What I mean is by the white man, because the white man went there about almost 500 years ago. How long was it? Was it that long or was it four, three? I can't remember. Anybody know off the top of their head? Google it. When did the white man go to South Africa? I forgot the exact year. 
But they, that was their plan from the beginning, to take the land over. Apartheid was a part of it. Okay? So they got many plans. Many, it used the term, seek, what did it say? Secret. Their devour. rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. They have many secret plots against the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me that Isaiah 29, 15, while he's looking that up. Yes, okay, the white man got to uh, South Africa in 1652. European settlement in South Africa. So that was their plan from the very beginning. Read that. I now they saw China moving in as the next superpower. They said, we got to shut China down. Now you see America got all the nations trying to sue China now. Trying to bankrupt them. Read that. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. These are their secret plots, devouring the poor secretly. And their works are in the dark. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? And they say, who seeth us? The white man says, who's going to know that we were the ones that created COVID-19? Who knows that we created Ebola? Who knows that we created anthrax? Nobody's going to know that. The Lord said, uh, I'm going to make their own tongue fall on them. Okay, Christ said, what, is, what they've done in secret, it shall be revealed in the light. What are you going to say, Malachi? Bishop, you know what's so heavy? That, that they said the virus come from, what the place? Wuhan? Wuhan, China. Wuhan, China. But you know that thing owned by America, right? That's right. You know, you know what he did, right? It's like they go in Haiti. They set up a, a what you call that? A laboratory. They create the virus in Haiti. And then they say the virus come from Haiti. Yes. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. So they, because they want to destroy the Chinese economy so bad, because they say, okay, we got to do something about this guy. They went in their country, opened a laboratory, created the virus, and then they say, oh, no, he's come from China. Yep, the Chinese but disease. when you look at America is, was the one who was given the money to create the virus. That's right. That's right. Let's go on back. Habakkuk. So that bottom part, I want you all to see that. They're, Habakkuk 3.14, the bottom. Their rejoicing was asked to devour the poor secretly. A lot of our people, and these plots and traps, you know, that people uh, do videos. What about the King Arthur, what is that King, uh, that King Arthur Project? Is that what it's called? This and that, and they're doing this. There's, guess what, brothers and sisters? There's nothing we can do about it. You know, like, I heard Deacon, King what? King Alfred plan, thank you. Deacon uh, Malachi in his class today, he said, with all, you got all these black conspiracy theorists, which a lot of them are true and factual. But guess what? At the end of the day, there's nothing we can do to stop it. All we can do is pray to the Lord. He is our power. That's all we can. Give me that Nehemiah 9, uh, 17, is it? Or 37? Yes, sir. 37. Y'all know what I want. Yes, sir. Can y'all tell the black Hebrew Israelites this verse here, you, there's nothing you can do against the white man's secret plots. Read that. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 37. And it yielded much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies. Also, they have dominion over our bodies. Go ahead. And over our cattle at their pleasure. And we are in great distress. And we are at great distress. So if, if it was true back then, how much more so today? They told us we couldn't shop unless we had a mask. What am I going to do? What, am I, what was I going to do? Take out a gun and just black? Y'all are stupid as hell, you black Hebrew Israelites. You're stupid as hell. Hey, what if they say coming up, hey, you can't shop here unless you have a vaccine card? Exactly. What you going to do then? What you going to do? Simple as hell. Go back to the back of three. Yes, sir. Verse, you want verse 14 again or go on to 15? 15. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 15. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses. His horses are the chariots. Go ahead. Through the heap of great waters. Through the heap of nations. Go ahead. When I heard, my belly trembled. Habakkuk said, when I heard this thing, my belly trembled. Go ahead. My lips quivered at the voice. He said, my lips, this is utter fear, quivered at the voice. Go ahead. Rottenness entered into my bones. This is a fear that we have never experienced. Now, we've all been scared at one point in time in life, but not like this. He says, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered my bones. Go ahead. And I trembled in myself. This is fear beyond imagination. Go ahead. That I might rest in the day of trouble. Habakkuk said, I pray that I'm dead 
during this time. He says that I might rest in the day of trouble. This is what he's talking about. This is the time that leads up to Jacob's trouble. But guess what it said in Jeremiah 37? We shall be delivered out of it. Go ahead. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. See what it says? He's going to invade the nations with his troops. That's what we just read. Didn't we just read that in 2nd Ezra 13? Did we read that? Uh, yes, sir. Get a lie? Yes, sir. That's what we just read. Go ahead. Verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind feet. Now, this is, this, 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 well, hold on that right there. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse 18 goes into us being delivered. Verse 19 is us being changed in the twinkling of an eye. Read verse 19. Verse 19. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind's feet. Hind's feet mean deer feet. I don't know if you've ever seen a gazelle run or jump. We can't match that right now in these bodies. But in the coming kingdom, he says, he will make my feet like hinds feet. Go ahead. <laughs> and he will make me to walk upon high places. Meaning okay. he will make me to walk upon governments. That's what he's going to do. Go ahead. To the chief singer of my stringed, stringed in instruments. So this was a song that was put forth that Habakkuk did. He changed this whole thing into a song and it's prophecy. All praises to the Lord. Let's get the Lord a hand for that thing right there. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.